Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Simply Unprofessional. I'm your host, Webby. Joining me tonight, we have Devin back. Hey, how's it going? I'm back. All right, so I'm going to start this off real quick. Devin, my mom wanted to ask, my mom wanted me to ask you, how was your Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was great. Better than I thought it was going to be. Um, She did miss you last week. But she did say Rob was a very funny guy. So, you know, there's that. There's that. But, you know, Rob, but he, but he, Rob's, but he's no Rob's Devin. not friends with my mom on Facebook like you are. But he's no Devin. That's that. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. I'm, Rob's pretty, a very sure funny that's guy. What, I'm pretty sure that's what my mom was trying to imply. <laughs> Where he's no, but he's no Devin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, All right. So your Thanksgiving like, was good. Sold. Yeah. All right, I know you did some cooking for your Thanksgiving. I did do some cooking for my what, Thanksgiving. What was the best thing you cooked personally for your Thanksgiving? Personally, the best thing I cooked was probably the mac and cheese. I know me, you, and Avalos had a conversation about your mac and cheese. We did. You True know, statement. I want to get the, I want to clear the air here for a moment, and I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. I'm sure. Now I remember Avalos mentioning, you know, he 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 likes certain mac and cheeses like the homemade mac and cheese and stuff don't get me wrong i really like like my dad makes a kick-ass mac and cheese and he'll like sometimes put like chunks of sausage in with it and um like uh he'll put some ritz crumpled up ritz crackers on the top of it right it's pretty good i personally i'm just a fan of your general cr- craft mac and cheese like out of a box does that make me a bad that. person no it's not wrong with that all right i just i feel like i'm i'm letting down the the mac and cheese connoisseurs out there just because i like the craft mac and cheese in a box so nothing wrong with that um <clears throat> so to get another thing out of the way i did want to touch upon uh i want to thank everybody who did know about this and and gave their support um last week i we had to bring my dad into the er he was having some complications uh, and then he was in icu for about a week um through through the thanksgiving holiday and over the weekend and i i had gone in and, and saw him and um thankfully my sister sheila had come up from I believe, I believe she lives in Rhode Island, um, and she pretty much has stayed at the hospital with my dad, twenty four seven. Um, and it was it was a little touch and go there, and he had he had everybody worried, but he has gotten drastically better, um, to the point where today he was discharged from the hospital. And he is being brought over to a physical therapy rehab center to help build up his strength and stamina again. Uh, he was still having, you know, a little bit, you know, lying in a bed for a week and, you know, whatnot. It's going to take a lot out of you. Um, so he's got a couple weeks that he's got to do that for, and then he should be okay to come home again. So, uh, but I want to say thank you to everybody who who showed your support. And uh, for those of you who didn't know about this, I, I, you know, now you do. Now you do. Uh, so yeah, thank you all, and thank you, Devin. You were there pretty much every step of the way for me, and we we're definitely sending messages back and forth. And uh, the other day, uh, when my dad he got moved out of the ICU and he was put up onto the fifth floor, um. 
and he was doing much better. He was sitting up, he was eating, he had his he had his uh, sense of humor back and everything. And one of the first things he had, he told me is he says, "You tell my buddy Damascus, I'm kicking it." So he he, he wanted me to tell you that he's he's whooping whatever this was. He's whooping it in the ass. And he's fighting through it. Damn straight he is. So, all right. Uh, so you, before we get onto this week's, uh, episode, um, you just recently got Halo on Steam, which, I mean, that's kind of a big deal because they've never really been released on PC. Um, now I was, I was a, I was a pretty big Halo 3 fan on Xbox. And, uh, now what exactly is this Halo that got released on, on Steam or whatnot? So it's the, it's the official, officially it's the Master Chief Collection, um, which was all the Halos from one through four. Okay. They added in Halo Reach and the way they're releasing them is they're releasing them in story chronological order. All right. So you started off with Halo one, essentially. No, Halo Reach, because Halo Reach actually is a prequel to Halo one. Oh, okay. So they're re- releasing them in, and that's ironically just the one that came out. Uh, between three and four, okay. So that just worked out for them, but um, or no, did four, Halo Reach come after four? I'm trying to think, I can't remember. But yeah, uh, one of the two. Halo Reach I, was I the last it, one. I think, it, did. I think it came out right after three. Yeah, it was three Reach. I think it was three Reach four. I think yeah. it was. Yeah, and then three Reach four, then five. But no, fuck Halo five. We're not talking about Halo five. <laughs> um, but yeah. So they released Reach, which Reach is coming out, came out December 3rd. Halo, in between now and sometime in 2020, they're going to release all of the ones. So like Reach is only $9.99 okay. on Steam. You can get it for $9.99 or you can buy the whole collection and get all the games, like pre-order all the games for 40 bucks. So that's all what right. I just did. I went ahead and pre-ordered all the games for 40 bucks because they're, they're actually HD remastering all the games. Okay. So like Reach is now like it's 4K. If you want to play it up in 4K, it's still like you can tell it's still like an upscaled game. So right. it's still like a little not as crisp as like a AAA title today would be. Right. But it looks really good, and you know, in, in comparison, it looks really good. And yeah, no, I'm loving the hell out of it. That's gonna be definitely gonna be seeing me stream more of that. Um, if I wasn't, if work wasn't trying to kill me this, this week and the stream wasn't coming up on the weekend here, I would probably be streaming this every day. Okay. Uh, now, look, I gotta ask this. Um, what is your favorite Halo? Reach. Reach was? Okay. Yeah, I, Reach was... And I'll tell you why. Halo 3 was is really good. Halo 3 is really, really good. Halo 4 is... Alright. Halo 2, I fell in love with. Um, just with how, you know, they brought in... Their, that's when they brought in dual wielding, and it was really fun. Um, that was like a fun like I grew up playing all the Halos, but the one I I grew up playing with my friends the most was Halo Two. Okay. Um. So and then we rolled in the Halo Three, rolled in the Reach, but Reach for me was the one where I actually started to get, I guess, get good. Um, in Halo, like I actually started to like like I played local tournaments in Halo Reach, things like that. Like I started to play and like got good at Halo Reach. Me and all my friends did. So like we were like it was. Four of us, four or five of us that were like we're competing local tournaments back in the day when you could go on um on game battles. We used to go on game battles and like do MLG, actual like MLG clan battles. Um and yeah, I mean that that was you know that was pretty much that, and that was the game for me that really kept me kind of like, yeah, you know. Halo Reach was the one I loved the most. Like I I love ninety percent of the maps in Halo Reach. I love. I just like the gunplay in Halo Reach. I like every. I, I just. I, I love Halo Reach. So like, as soon as Halo Reach came out, I was like, "Oh yes, this is happening, boys." All right. Yeah. See, my first introduction to Halo <clears throat> was uh, when I lived in Texas. Uh, my girlfriend at the time and her dad were huge into Halo. Now they had this thing set up where they're. Their family was kind of big into it, but it was mainly her and her dad. So they had it set up where they had one Xbox in like the living room on a TV, and then they had another Xbox in in a bedroom set up on a projector that would project it onto the wall. So that way they could do battles against each other and not have to worry about like one person looking at the other person's 
TV yep. screen or whatever. And uh, my very first time playing there, uh, I was put on her dad's team. And he tried to warn me. He's like, you, you know, watch out. She's a sniper. She's real good with the sniper rifle. And I was just like, all right. So we're playing a match, right? And I mean, I found a sniper rifle and I was like, all right. So we're playing and I probably sniped her at least a dozen times at that match. <laughs> and uh, so they all thought I was lying about never having played Halo before. I was like, nah, I swear, this is, this is my first first time ever playing this game. And then Halo 3 came out or whatnot, and we started playing Halo 3 pretty pretty often, and we had we had a good little click going with a group of online friends that we play Halo 3 with. My big thing in Halo 3, I always was the driver of the Warthog. Uh, nice. I, I don't know what it was. I was just really good at driving. Uh, if I wasn't in a warthog, like if I didn't have a gunner in the warthog, I would always be in a ghost and just running, mowing people down, just running them over. Like <laughs> I got into some crazy places with the ghost. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um. So yeah, but no, those those, those I'd have to say three was probably my favorite. Uh, that was also the last one that I played. I've only played Halo two and three, so. I don't I don't think I ever played the original Halo. I've always wanted to play through like the story mode, but I never no one ever wanted to play story mode with me. So I always had to play solo and then I just got bored with it. So but anyway, all right. <laughs> Moving on. This week's episode, Devin. I finally watched it. Stephen King movie. It's the first one of the month of Stephen King December. You had me watch The Running Man. Yup. This fucking movie it was amazing. I well, it was something. <laughs> I will say MVP, best character hands down in the entire movie, Agnes. Agnes is amazing. Agnes the from the crowd, she's like next Next kill, Ben Richards. He's one mean motherfucker. <laughs> oh, Agnes, calm down. Uh, all right. So, The Running Man, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. The premise of this movie is he was a military person in in the quote unquote future, which it took place in 2017. <laughs> he disobeyed a direct order to fire upon some unarmed helpless civilians he was then uh, thrown into like a prison camp like work camp thing uh, in which through some fantastic fight scenes uh, they escaped him and two friends and then he was on the run he was caught and then thrown into this video, this, 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 I get this, uh, game show, I guess. Now we want to talk about sadistic game shows, man. The whole premise of this game show, and they didn't really even explain it, is the runner has to run through all four quadrants and essentially make it to the end before being killed by a stalker. Right? And that is the stalker's job, is to kill these people. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Okay. That's exactly right. So, the game show host guy fucked over Arnold, said, because Arnold essentially says he'll do the... He'll, he'll, he'll be the runner on the show as long as they let his other two friends go. But not only was Arnold a runner, they made the two friends runners. So now there's three of them. And then there was a chick who turned him in at the airport who ended up getting tossed in because she felt bad and started stealing stuff. So she got tossed in as a runner. And then all these fucking stalkers come. And these stalkers are cheesy, cheesy 80s, like fucking reject horror film fucking villains like 
I don't even know. Out of all the stalkers, who which one's your favorite, Devin? Um probably the fat singing guy. Dynamo or whatever his Dynamo, name was. Dynamo. Dude, Dynamo. he was my least favorite. He was my favorite Fucking because he was your least favorite. Electric light bright over here. That's what his suit looked like. It, it, reminded, it reminded me of that light bright bullshit that we used to have as a kid where you can make the pictures and then they light up. Mm-hmm. Man, fuck that guy. Opera singing. He had this fucking little ass car, like the doom buggy that he sat in, where his head popped out the top. No, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy so hard. You love that guy. No, oh, I wow. don't. I think, honestly, I think guy. my favorite was Sub-Zero, the, the, the hockey guy. Mainly because in the credits, his, he's a professor. It's Professor something. Played Sub-Zero. Um... I will say this movie was just what's the running time for this movie? Like an hour and a half, I'll say without without actually looking it up. I think it's like an hour and forty three minutes or some shit like that. Yeah, so this movie was essentially an hour and forty minutes of zingy one liners from Arnold Schwarzenegger. They were amazing. They were horrible, horrible one liners. Arnold, Arnold, like from eighties, nineties, classic. <laughs> Like, come on, classic. Uh, they were. I will say he did do the patented "I'll be back" line. He did. Um, this movie was made after Terminator, right? I'm guessing. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, was Was see. Terminator the first movie he did the "I'll be back" in? I'm not sure. And then that just Terminator kind of became his out. catchphrase. Terminator came out. Why are you giving me Terminator 2 Judgment? Well, actually, that's when he said it, actually. thinking. No, he said it in the first one. I thought he said it in the second one. Or did he say it again in the second one? No, he said it in the first one in the police station. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, So with that being said, let's see. Terminator said in the first one. That came out 84. The Running Man came out in '87, so he came out three years before. Yep. Okay, so Terminator so did, most likely pretty much is the first one. Terminator, Running Man, Terminator Two. Yeah, it's pretty much how that went down. So ever since Terminator, that's been kind of Arnold's catchphrase: "Is the I'll be back." Uh, I for those of you who have not seen this movie, you need to. I will say that <laughs> you have to. I you know. I, I will say the movie to me did not age well. I think it would. I don't know if they've remade it. Have they remade The Running Man? Do you know? No. They haven't? I think it's I worth remaking. I think it's a decent plot, I guess. Um, But for those of you who have seen the original Running Man, Devin, my favorite part of this movie is those awesome orange nets. Those fucking nets are supposed to catch a metal bobsled, essentially, that's going God knows how fast, and they stop them on a dime. And these are like just like the the plastic safety orange nets that you would get on like road construction. I want to know what these are made of in 2017. In the future, downtown future Los Angeles, it's like made out of like tight, like flexible titanium or something. Something like that. Uh, movie was horrible. I don't like. I don't even know. Like it was you entertaining. It. Now, okay, the thing is, it was entertaining. It was funny, even at times. It's I. I just. It did not age well. It, and you know me, I don't like puns. And that was, Arnold was just a pun. He was a walking pun machine in this movie. Um, to be fair, I think Arnold's a walking pun machine in most of his movies. Hmm. Maybe I, hmm. Maybe I don't like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I don't know anymore. You loved it. Don't lie. Um... Long story short, spoiler alert, uh, Arnold survives and they end up like the resistance wins. 
They end up shutting down this TV show, and the they send the the, the host down the bobsled tube, and there's no orange net at the bottom to to stop him. So he just goes flying off in through like a billboard. Buzzsaw got cut in half through his crotch, and he apparently had chainsaws that could cut through anything, like including steel I beams and shit. Yep. Don't I don't. You know, I I just tried not to ask too many questions while watching this with you, because none of this made sense. It it was an eighties movie, or yeah, it was an eighties movie. Yeah, I, yeah, too. I get it. Um, so uh, like with that being said, I give this movie, having seen it now and not seen this, is not my like childhood version of me rating this movie, because like there are a lot of movies that just have not aged well, but I still love them dearly because they were staples in my childhood. I'm watching this for the first time. To me, the movie did not age well. I'm going to give this movie like, I'm going to, I'm going to mid card it at like a five out of 10. Uh, but I'm going to preface that five out of 10 with, it is a must see. (laughs) Uh, I do recommend people to watch this if you haven't. And I do think it might be decent if it's remade. That's how I'm going to rate this movie, essentially. So, Devin, you had seen this movie previous to us watching it, obviously, right? Yes. Now, what is... How long ago are we talking that you watched this? Like, is this something like you've watched this when you were a kid? I watched this uh, quite a few times. <laughs> like, I mean, I've seen it quite a few times. All right, so tell those. What are some of the? What are what are some of your favorite scenes in this movie that really make this movie? I mean, I, guess, I don't know if I have a favorite scene per se in this movie. I just like the movie i mean i don't know if i have a favorite scene per, per se in the movie i do like the whole um well like what about the movie stands out? Like, i mean i just what stands out to me i mean I, I just think it's kind of just a uh i don't know it's, it's hard to say like it's just a movie i find enjoyable like that i wouldn't I, I can't point to one thing we'd be like i find this enjoyable because of this i just find the movie enjoyable but um, if I had to say one thing like that really I, I enjoyed was having like you know the whole like price is right gladiator edition um yeah okay i did find that kind of humorous was like oh here on the screen here's you know blah blah so and so fighting somebody with a chainsaw and while they're doing that you win a prize and you win a prize and here's your home edition of the running man (laughs) like board game it's like what the fuck people (laughs) what is this yep Yep. and i mean that is that is a perfect iconic view of like 80s game shows too yeah you know, I mean, they even had the host of the host of the prices right on there. He, he was the main villain. Mm-mm. Wasn't it? Not the price is right. Not the price um, is right. Sorry. Um, um, family feud. Family feud. Yep. That's what I want to say. My buy it. Uh, now, are we in agreement that the best character in the movie was Agnes? Yes. yes. Agnes was Agnes was the best character. She was she was by, not in the movie for very long, but she was hands down the most ornery. Well, ornery character <laughs> she was the best character like, yes. she was in there for long where she was by far the best character let's be real here um so let's go through a couple of the stalkers real quick i, I know we just kind of mentioned them. so sub-zero was your first one so he was essentially a giant what was he like japanese guy or like a korean dude Yep, pretty much. Uh, he was a, he he was a big big guy in a hockey outfit, ice skating around with a hockey stick that was had razors on the edge. It was sharpened to the point where he cut a gong in half. But yet, when he hit like the wooden board that you would check somebody into, it stopped the hockey stick. I don't know, but he cut a fucking gong in half. I don't like. I don't. I just don't get the movie sometimes. Um, so that was Sub Zero. I'm questioning. After Sub Zero, they sent in. Uh, after Sub Zero was when they sent in Buzzsaw and Dynamo as a pair. I believe. 
So Buzzsaw pretty much rode around on a dirt bike and just had chainsaws hanging off of him. Like, he had more than one chainsaw. And he only ever used the one, but he had, like, a couple chainsaws hanging off of him that could essentially cut through anything. And then there was Dynamo, who was just this fat, light, bright guy in a small-ass car who had, like, uh, like arc... Um, like, he could just shoot arcs, arcs of electricity. And, like, he could, like, lessen the power. So if he's only using it to tase you, it was yellow. But if he's using it to actually do inflict the damage, it was blue. I caught on to that. Because he tased that chick and it was, like, yellow lightning instead of blue. Um, So after those two, then they sent in... uh, What was his name? Fireball? Or... I forget the fire guy's name. Uh, fire. I think it was fire. I think it was just fireball or fire, 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 something, fire, something. Yeah. In any case, this guy had a jetpack, and essentially his backpack was a fuel backpack full of you know whatever because he had a flamethrower, and his suit was flame retardant, so he could walk through fire. Uh, he ended up getting blown up. I, I, you know, if you can't tell, or if you didn't see that one coming. After him, they were going to send in... Oh, fucking, what's Jesse Ventura's name in this movie? There's, like, uh, Captain Thunder or something like that, or... I don't remember. He played some military dude. And he, he came barging into, like, the control room, and it looked like he was wearing a microwave. Um... But he essentially told them to go fuck themselves, and he wasn't going to do it because this game lost their pizzazz. Uh, he was essentially the champion stalker that was coming out of retirement to deal with Arnold's character. So instead, they fabricated a fight scene between Captain Thunder or whatever and uh, Arnold and the girl. Um and then that's what they showed the audience. But then that's during that time is when Arnold was essentially meeting with the underground people and giving them the codes to take control of some satellites so they could like control the network. And then they busted in on the network with guns. It was insane. And it happened really fast. Um, I will say for a game show all about running... They they didn't really run a whole lot. There was some running. They did more shuffling than anything. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Uh. Now, okay, I have a, I have a unique well, not unique, but I have a question for you, Devin. Mm-hmm. The Running Man. This type of movie. What would you compare? If you had to name another movie to compare this to, what would you say? Um. Uh, there's a couple of movies like. I'm trying to think. Because like this is this was kind of like, kind of like the Hunger Games ish. You know, uh, kind of, yeah, maybe even uh, see, I, I kept thinking of that movie with Steve Austin where they're on like an island that like that battle royale movie, but it's not really like that. I don't know. I, like, I don't know how I would describe this movie to somebody who hasn't seen it. Like if I was trying to like compare it to another movie. For reference sake. I mean, it kind of is like Condemned or kind of like Rollerball. Condemned, that's the one I was talking about. Kind of like Condemned or kind of like Rollerball. Rollerball, is that the one with fucking... Wait, was LL Cool J in that? That was the remake of it, but yeah. Oh. Yeah, like, uh, that was like the, the roller derby. Like the deadly roller derby or whatever, right? Yep. 
Okay. So I do have a question that was given to us on our Discord server by Jewel Hernandez. So, The Running Man. Would you remake this movie and or watch a remake of this movie? And if so, who would you have star in it for the various roles? So for this, I'm going to open up IMDb real quick. Uh, I, for one, yes. Hands down, I think this movie should be remade if it hasn't already. I don't think it has. Devin says it hasn't. Uh, Devin, do you think they should remake this movie? Um, or if they did, yeah. would you watch it? Yeah, I, I'd be down with that. Okay. Now, in the role of Ben Richards, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who would you see playing that role in a in a remake of this movie? Um... Who would I see playing that role in a remake of this movie? Oh, I already have mine. Because I remember, because remember, they they went after Ben Richards because he looked like a big, imposing guy, and that's what the that's what that host guy wanted. Um, my hmm. pick, Dave Bautista. Yeah, that would work. I mean, he's a pretty big, imposing dude. Um, I could see him playing that military military role. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Um, I mean, yeah, he would work. I, I'd say maybe Tom Hardy, just depending on how they wanted to make it. Tom Hardy would be good too, in my opinion. Okay, but... yeah, I could see that. Uh, yeah, I mean, what about be... what about the dude from Rampage that had to fight the giant wolf? Um, I know I'm referencing him from Rampage, which was which I know is your favorite of all movies. Oh, uh, Joe. Uh, yeah, uh, Joe Manganella or whatever. Nah, he's good, but nah, I don't need I don't need him in this. Okay. So your vote would be Tom Hardy. I vote Dave Bautista. Now, what about uh, Amber Mendez, who is the the lady who is Arnold's love interest in this movie, who turns him in at the airport and then eventually feels bad about it and gets thrown into the running man contest. <clears throat> I mean, honestly, I would go with like Sophia Vergara. Cause I laughed and said, watching, I'm like, she's like a low budget Sophia, Ver- Sophia Vergara. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. So I'm in agreement with you on that one. Uh, what about his, uh, Ben Richards friend, William Laughlin. Which I believe what um, you said was like the uh, the low low budget Samuel L. Jacksons of the of yep, his time. That's what I said, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. That was like Samuel Jackson back in the day, though. It's really him now. Yeah, that's the thing. That's back in the day, Samuel. So, who would you cast as William Laughlin? Knowing his, um, knowing his role, he he has kind of a a, a sidekick sideline type of role. So you don't want to necessarily throw in that A list actor there because he's not going to get too much screen time. I don't feel. Do you ever watch Nikita? On uh, what you call? It? I have not, but it is on my to watch list. I think okay, I've first seen off, you episode. totally should watch it. By the way, okay. But um, I would say, I would say the guy that played uh, Burkoff would be, would would be my pick. Okay. Do you have a picture of him? Uh, because this would not be an SU episode without Devin sending me a visual aid. Ow, that hurt real bad. Uh, he he was in something else too. He was in uh, Twelve Monkeys. Oh man, it's been it's been a it's been a while since I've seen Twelve Monkeys. Uh, what was the guy's name? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to get a picture here. 
Give me a second. You know who I think they should, uh, who I would pick for this role? Is uh, the brother in Lucifer. Oh, you mean for the black guy? I thought you were talking about the other guy, like the smart guy. No, Laughlin is the, William Laughlin is the, is the black guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then yeah. If you're going for the black guy, then yeah, 100%, I would say. 100%. Um, yeah, that works for me. That or the guy that played, maybe played Mac. In, uh, what do you call it? In Predator? No, Mac and, um, that we like, uh, Shotgun Axe guy. Oh, oh yeah, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh man, yeah, I'd like to see him in more shit. So I, yeah, I, okay, you you got me. I switched my vote to Mac. You got me because I want to see him in more stuff. All right, now okay, let's flip that into okay. The next character would be Harold Weiss, who is the nerdy guy. He was he was Arnold, uh, he was that would be the guy I take for Ben's for other Burkoff. I just need a second here. Nerdy white guy. I'd Why go... can I not get his name? Why can I not get his freaking name? I'd go with... No, well, he doesn't really look too, too nerdy, but I like the actor... Um, also from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Tomorrow People. Uh, Aaron Stanford. There we go. That's the guy I was looking for. And this is who you choose for the nerdy guy? Yeah. Aaron Stanford. That's the guy I was thinking of. I couldn't. You got a picture incoming? I do in two seconds here. Nerdy yeah. white guy role. Hmm. Uh, general. Just go. Okay. Uh, I'd like. You know what? Sticking with the agents of the shield theme, I'd like uh, the 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 nerdy scientist on that show. He's already playing a nerd. Yeah, yeah, actually, you work too, Fitz. The guy played Fitz. Yeah, Fitz. I think he would. I think he would pull off that that role pretty well. Uh, yeah, fair. Um. So now for some of the let's. Those are pretty much the only the runners that we had. Uh. So the only other people I want to try to recast now is who would you get as the host of the show? Um, I would go with Craig Ferguson in a really weird pick. You know what? I'm going to stick with the family feud theme and go with Steve Harvey. <laughs> isn't, okay. He, isn't he the current host of the family feud? He is the current host of the family feud. <laughs> so you know we what? Can let's go, go, with let's, let's let's go, go Jim original... Carrey from The Price is Right. Let's go Jim Carrey from The Price is Right. Oh, shit. Not only did he do the prices right, but he he did the uh, look who's ta- look who's laughing now or whatever, right? Yep. What was that other show that he did? Look, uh, no, uh, whose line is it anyway? Whose, whose line? line is it anyway? So I mean, yeah, he, he. You know who actually make a pretty good host in that though? I'm not gonna lie, Wayne Brady would. The guy's super talented. Did everything. Oh, that's does, true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I don't feel like Jim Carrey could pull off Sinister. Like no, I, just don't, I, I don't think so either. I think he could pull off Sinister. Like, ah, I'm evil. I'm Do mean, you think Wayne uh, Brady could? I think he could. I mean, he's pretty. He's he's pretty versatile. I don't know. Like, seen. I have a hard time picturing Wayne Brady. Like, I picture him doing like the playing up to the crowd portion of this movie, but like, I have a hard time picturing him like being like the serious dude behind the scenes. Like the whole, if that guy's still mopping the floor tomorrow, you're going to be mopping the floor for the rest of the week kind of guy. Yeah, I got you. I don't know. I, I think he can. I, I think, think he can I, I, I'd like to give him a shot. How's that? We're going we're gonna to cast Wayne Brady in this role. Okay. 
I'd like to I'd like to see his repertoire here. So we got we got Wayne Brady as our as our host. So now we just have to go through and I'm gonna name off some of the stalkers. And we're just gonna recast the stalkers, and that'll essentially be the end of our episode here. Uh so the first stalker we're gonna do is Sub Zero, played by Professor Toru Tanaka. So who would we get to play Sub Zero, Devin? What other movie was this guy in? This guy was in a lot of movies. I thought he was in like the uh, Three Ninjas movies. He might have been. He may have been. It's possible. Uh, no, Three Ninjas was not that old. So if he was, it would have been up here. Uh Oh, he was in Three Ninjas. He was Rushmore. Okay. And he was in Last Action Hero as build as tough Asian man. <laughs> okay. Um so who are we going to recast as this guy for Sub-Zero? Uh I mean, he has like a wrestling demeanor about him. Uh, you know, honestly, I'd probably go with uh, like if there are any current wrestlers, like um, were they the Usos or whatever. Mm-hmm. If there's any of any of them, I'd probably cast as as this role. I don't know. I think Sub Zero is the hardest one for me to cast in this. God damn it! Who would you who who would you pick? Um. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. Actually, just one of the yeah, like. Yeah, because I can't think of too many, like, people that would fit that role. You know what? I would even go, like, let's get rid of the whole Asian thing. And let's just get, like, a really large, like, largely built Canadian. Let's go, let's let's stick it right to the stereotype, because he's a hockey uh, stalker. He's dressed all in hockey pads, and hockey's real big in Canada. Down with that. So we're just going to get a real big Canadian. Down with it. And then every time he hits them, he can just apologize and then continue hitting them. I'm going to dive right into that stereotype. Fuck it. <laughs> um, let's see. These, the one, this one, and this one. So we got four more left to Bill. Uh, who would you get to play Buzzsaw, the Chainsaw Dude? Um, hmm. You know what? Bruce Campbell. <laughs> Let's do it. He's <laughs> iconic with a chainsaw anyway. Exactly. People will and, know him. And the movie's ridiculous without being ridiculous. Bruce Campbell's perfect. Yep, I love he, it. He was made for this role. I love it. <laughs> you know what? You get... Plus a hundred DKP. All right, I'm in. Sold. <laughs> All right, I, I I I'm going to hate asking this question. Who are we getting as Dynamo? Because <laughs> fuck this light bright guy. If it was up to me, he'd be he'd be out of the movie. Is he still alive? Hold on, hold on. Is this guy still alive? I don't know. Oh my god, are you gonna just recast him? No. I choose Butterbean. You choose Butterbean? Yep. <laughs> Man. Oh man, the guy who played Dynamo is not alive anymore either. He died. That's unfortunate. He died in 1987. That's unfortunate, but I picked Butterbean. 
Uh, but Butterbean, I don't think Butterbean has like that opera voice. Oh, that can be dubbed in. That's we can fine. just not have that opera voice be no, a thing. No, that was the whole thing with Dynamo. Was he was like that nah, opera we're fucking fine. lightning guy. We're fine. Um, you know who else might do it? Is uh the remember the the bullies or whatever from those old Nickelodeon shows? There's mm-hmm. always like the bigger the bigger guy. I don't remember. I don't remember names. Um, like, have you ever seen the movie Evolution with the aliens? Mm-hmm. Uh, they were the they were the two dumb students. He was one of them. Or uh, the bully from Boy Meets World would be another good guy, a good one. Which I just I think I recently saw him in something too. I don't know. That'd be my pick. Although, no, this guy was big. Like, tall, too. So, yeah, Butter Butterbean might be a good pick. How tall is Butterbean? He a, he a, he a tall boy? Relatively. All right. All right, so your pick is Butterbean. Mine is the bully from Boy Meets World. <laughs> Two very very opposite ends of the spectrum on that one, I guess. Um, fireball. Who would you get as the fireball guy? Go Jamie Fox. Idris Elba. Idris Elba. Okay, that works too. I'm down with Idris Elba. Yeah. I, I, I just, I think the whole, because st- the Fireball guy seemed to be like the most stalkerish. Like he was kind of slow and methodical with his, with his stalking as opposed to like driving by in like a, a dirt bike. Uh, and I just, Idris Elba just seems to me like the, that slow methodical stalker. He could pull that off really well. And then the last stalker we have to talk about is... Jesse Ventura's character, Captain Freedom, is what it was, not Thunder. <clears throat> Captain Freedom with a full head of hair. <sighs> you know who I would pick for this role? Who? Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's got to make a cameo somewhere. True. I don't know. I I think he'd make a pretty good Captain Captain Freedom. You know, because I mean, Captain Freedom cho- ultimately chose not to participate anyway, and he was a reigning champ. So, that's my pick. Arnold Schwarzenegger has a cameo role for one of the stalkers that doesn't really do anything. Uh, I do have one more surprise recast for you, Devin. Who would you cast as Agnes? Mm. Who would I cast as Agnes? I already got mine. Who, uh, who would you? Fucking Betty White. <laughs> I'm down with that. Hell yeah. Unless the lady who played Agnes is still kicking. Because then let's just bring her back. (laughs) I doubt she's still kicking. Probably not. But Betty White is. So. Yeah, so, I mean, that's our, essentially, that's our main recasting of The Running Man. Um, Highly recommend it. It got 6.7 out of 10 on IMDb. It is an hour and 41 minutes long, so you were pretty spot on with the hour and 40 minute thing. Um, I gave it a 5 out of 10, so I mean, I wasn't, I, I was, I was being, you know, I was being nice. I wasn't too far behind the IMDb rating of it. What would you give it out of a 10 if this is like one of your more liked movies? Um. 
What would I give it out of a 10? Yeah. It's a good question. I give it a 5. IMDb gives it a 6.7. I'd give it around a 6. A 6, 7. Yeah, 6 or 7. That All sounds right. fair. All right. And obviously you would recommend this movie to other people. Yes. I would too. <clears throat> um, so now I have a question. That, okay, so that was essentially our, our breakdown and our talk about Running Man. It was my first time seeing it. Now, I will preface most of the movies that we are watching this this month for Stephen King month, I have not seen. The one exception is the last week of December. You and I are going to sit down and we're going to watch the original It and then the, the It remake. And we're going to do like a comparison of the two. I have seen the original It, but I have not seen the remake. But... Next week, Devin, what was our choice for next week's movie for Stephen King December? Uh, the Langoliers. The Langoliers. Now, can you give us, without giving away too much description or without without ruining anything, uh, in your own words, can you give me, because I have not seen it, and the listeners, a little, a, a little snippet of what, you know of what this movie is about. Give, give me a little teaser taste of, of what I can expect when we sit down to watch this movie. All right. Um, well, first off, it's a mini series. So if you want to watch it out there, it's two episodes, each movie length. So you're looking at about three hours. Okay. Um, to watch this for three, three and a half hours. In so, fact, all these movies are long as shit. So when, when are me and you sitting down and watching these, together yes, like we have the yeah. last couple because I, I really want to hear your or see your reaction to this because this okay. is it's a good it's good it's good and give you an idea if i'm not mistaken this was originally made for came on sci-fi back in the day okay this is a sci a made for sci-fi movie so now keep my, that in mind now my next question is are me and you going to watch both parts at the same time just back to back and get it done and over with or are we i'm down break with that I'm down with that. Like, I would love to, obviously, with this weekend, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. Unless you feel up to it after the stream on Sunday. Okay. Um, or or actually, no, we don't. I don't have a mandatory meeting on Monday anymore, so I could take a Monday off because I was going to take Monday off anyway. Originally, I'm, I'm off they Monday. Had a... Okay. So this is what we can do. I was going to take Monday off originally so I can recoup, but they were like, oh, mandatory work meeting. You have to be there. And I'm like, fuck. But then they just canceled that today. So <laughs> okay. I so... may take Monday off and we can literally just do watch both and go right into the SU right after that. Sounds good to me. So we will do this Monday. We'll do this next episode Monday. So in your yep. own words, give me and the listeners a little, a little teaser of essentially what, what is this Langoliers movie about? What is a Langolier? Like what is this rag, movie about? A rag tag group of random passengers on a jet airline fall asleep and wake up in what appears to be an alternate reality, and they're stuck at an airport. Okay. With seemingly nobody in sight, it has terrible 90s special effects. Okay, I love it. Terrible, terrible 90s CGI. Um, has a heartwarming yet super annoying blind girl, and uh, is just generally... I have a hard time calling this movie good. Stephen but... King really liked like getting people stranded in places, huh? He did. He did. He did. He did. I have a hard time saying the movie's good, but it is entertaining if nothing else. Okay. I will say that. It is entertaining. I I, okay. I enjoy it just because I haven't seen it in in about three or four years. I usually try to eh, probably longer than that, about five or six years. I usually I used to watch this movie probably once or twice a year. Okay. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. My favorite of all the ones that we're going to watch is going to be the next one we watch after Langoliers is, is Rose Red. Okay. That's my favorite out of all of these, including it. Like I enjoy it a lot. Don't get me wrong, but well, the new it's are kind of cool, but they're more like movies. The other ones are like made for TV miniseries. So out of the miniseries we're watching, I would say Rose Red is my favorite. Okay. Yeah. Cause um, think about it. Like you said, the Langoliers, they're stuck in a, in an airport. Yep. 
The Shining, they were stuck in a motel or in, yep. a, in a hotel. Well, I mean, well, I mean, it makes sense because you have to think about it like this, right? Like that's it's kind of not existential, but it's kind of like you know having that horror of you can start doing stuff like you know they're alone. So, you know, they're alone. All they have to do is up. And then you slowly start to realize that kind of what happens in this too. They slowly start to realize stuff's being stuff's off. And you think about like in a real life situation, if you were to like, let's say you showed up at work every day, right? Right. You drove into work, same, you know, same routine every day you drove into work. But one day you got to work, cars are outside, you walk in the building, there's nobody in the building. That'd be fun. You know, there's, there's nobody there. You try to leave, you can't leave, or like you try to leave like the prim the pr- the premises of your building of like your your work, you can't leave, and you're just there by yourself. Or, and immediately that's terrifying. But if you don't realize that, like you just walk in, like, huh, maybe they're on a meeting or something, whatever. And you go kick up at your desk for a couple hours, and then you start to realize, like, well, I haven't seen anybody today. And you start walking around the place, and you're like, there's nobody fucking here. Their cars are outside. There's nobody fucking here. Mm. And then you start walking around and then you're like, you know, something's off. Like, you know, the lights keep flickering or you're walking down the hallway or something. And it's like, I feel like this hallway is taking forever to get down. You know, like, I feel like I've been walking this, this same hallway for like 10 minutes. I swear it's like not that long of a hallway. Right. And, I, and at first it starts to like minorly, like take you an extra minute or two to like get from one place to another and like slowly fucks with your brain. And then you realize it. And then you try like running down the hallway and it gets like longer and longer and longer shit like that. Like, I mean, so training someone somewhere allows you to like in a place that's both familiar and then slowly adding on the, the aspects of things not being familiar or adding on the aspects of the strange makes it that much more terrifying because now you're taking somebody out of their place of comfort or somebody out of a place that they should know, like you're in an airport, you know how airports work. There should be people everywhere in airports. There should be, you know, right. a relative layout you follow, right? Well, if slowly those things start changing, like you're at an airport, you're like your flight's delayed, and then like after three or four hours, you you know you pass out. You like you fall asleep. Your flight's delayed. You pass. There's a bunch of people. You wake up and the airport's dead silent. There's nobody there. You're like, okay. Um, pick up the phones, phones don't work. You know, you're taking somebody in a situation where they should know all the variables, or at least in their head they know all the variables, and make it blatantly obvious that they're they that they don't. Right. <laughs> and, but see, like know, that not even adds to the it adds to the horror. But like not even all of these Stephen King movies, like like the ones where he has them essentially trapped in places, they're not always like mind like uh uh, what's well, the word? They're not always like mind fucks. You're right, yeah. but they're but they because, are. Like, let's 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 see. You start like, to create your own narrative. Though. Like the, the Shining, they're they're stuck in the hotel. Then he went, right. slowly went insane. Right, he slowly went insane, or you know, depending on where you're getting your story. If you're reading the book, the, the it was actually haunted. It was ghost fucking with him. Right. If you if you're going by the movie, it was more or less like he slowly started going insane from right. the isolation. So the Lankleers, they're stuck in an airport. Yes. Uh, Cujo. I believe I leave I believe the person's stuck in a car for the better part of the movie. Cause doesn't Cujo like surround the car? I believe at one point Cujo does. Yeah. Uh God, not with rollerball. The <laughs> the best Stephen King movie ever made, Maximum Overdrive, they're stuck at a gas station. That's He did he didn't make Tremors, but Tremors was also that way. Tremors yeah, is a great movie. Tremors, they were stuck on a rock. And like outside, they were, rock. they were stuck in a diner on the back on the of a pickup line. truck. Like, yeah, <laughs> like I, I love Tremors though. Tremors is great, ah, dude. Me too. We should watch. Tre- I want to rewatch Tremors now, <laughs> dude. And I love the one guy, like like the hoarder guy, or like the like the prepper guy. He yes. just kept fucking rolling with those movies. Yep. He, I, I think he, I think he's still making those fucking movies. Probably. I'm kidding. They had a Tremors TV show in 2003. Um. Yeah, he had. Let's see. So the trim, the first in, uh, this film was the first installment of the Tremors franchise. Oh, and was followed by four direct to video sequels: Tremors Two, Aftershock, Tremor, which I watched. I like Tremors One and Tremors Two are actually pretty good. Tremors Three, Back to Perfection, Tremors, uh, Tremors Five. 
Okay. Tremors 4, The Legend Begins. Tremors 5, the Bloodlines. First, the first Tremors, and Tremors, A Cold Day in Hell. The first Tremors had... That has Jamie Kennedy? The first Tremors right. had Kevin Bacon in it, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah, Michael Gross. Michael Gross, man. That guy, yeah. he was... A, I think he was in all of them. Was he in every... I think he was in every Tremors. Let's see. Tremors. Bert. Yeah, good old Bert. He was in every Tremors. He was in Tremors 1, Tremors 2, Tremors 3, Tremors 4, and Tremors 5, Tremors 6, and he's going to be in Tremors Island Fury in t- coming out in 2020, which is currently filming. This guy has his ran with the franchise, and you know what? I don't blame you. I don't know. Me neither. Hey, you know what? And he survived all of these Tremors so far. He did. He must, he did. at this point, he must he be is like... 72 in real life. Dude, at this point in Tremors... Graduated you know, from Yale. In the next Tremors movie, at this point, his character just must be like, the second it happens, it's like, guys, I know what to do. I know what's happening here. Don't worry, I've survived this well, I'm pretty. I haven't seen <laughs> the other Tremors. I'm pretty sure like they're going to they're gonna start to like... They, I'm pretty Evolve. sure they start ramping the Tremors up. Yeah. This uh, is the first... It's the entry this made without participation of Stampede Entertainment. The production company formed a brand new created series. Universal chosen instead to maintain all creative control. Uh, the film received mixed reaction from critics, but received more positive reviews from the, from the fans of the franchise. Apparently, Tremors 5 wasn't that bad. I may have to watch Tremors 5. Um, in a cold day in hell. Oh, it's on Netflix currently. I'm trying to see, because this guy looks familiar, not just from... Tremors movie, but <laughs> he was in a TV movie called A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. <laughs> All I'm right, down. I'm uh, down. But yeah, no, the Langoliers, uh, Becky Langoliers, Langley, Langoliers. Uh, I think if if you want to watch it, I will say this, people, you don't have to watch the Langoliers. It's not something you need to see in your life. But I think it's totally worth seeing. I enjoy it. But it's, you told me you told me it's something I had to see in my life. Yes. But the listeners don't have to see it. No, I don't agree. Listeners, you have to see this movie. In fact, you should go watch it um, <coughs> before we do SU's for next week. So watch it between now and next week. Also, too, Friday, if you're coming out, uh, come out to our stream. All day stream Saturday and Sunday. Hell yeah, that. starting tomorrow at noon on twitch.tv slash distraction, distraction media. media. And you can uh, find us all over. So you can find me streaming some Halo at some point. Probably not then, but probably Monday or late Sunday or whatever. You'll find me. I'll be around. Yep. Uh, I recently started streaming and uh, I streamed a little bit of Diablo. By a little bit, I think my stream was like three and a half hours long. Um only had a couple people show up, but that's fine. Uh, oh, yeah, it was pretty much. I you was there in the game and was, in the stream. It was pretty much you and John. Uh, but I'll probably be streaming a little bit more Diablo. Uh, I still have the same character. I play on hardcore, so that's an achievement in itself. Um, yep, and I will probably be joining him playing at some point or another because I usually do when I can pull him away from Halo. Because he did send us Halo. the message saying that I did send the message specifically telling them like, "Yo, hey guys, I like I love all of you, <laughs> but y'all ain't gonna reach me for a while." <laughs> if you need me, just drop a line. You it know was essentially the same message I sent you when WoW Classic came out. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I was like, if I had more time, I was gonna actually like drop, like, I was gonna drop like a greeting card in the mail and be like, "Yo, look." <laughs> The nice. time, the time we spent together was something I treasure. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, for sure, everybody, come out to our stream tomorrow. If you can donate, great. It's for a great cause. We're donating for Extra Life or raising money for Extra Life, which is raising money for the Children's Miracle Network. Um, I specifically am raising money for the Boston's Children's Hospital. Um, so if you can donate, fantastic. If you can't, that's fine. Come and show your support. Yep. Uh, join just our stream and donate just hang your out. time. Donate your time. If you can't donate monetarily, donate your time. Yep. I always, you know, they always say, you know, hey, share it on Facebook, do this. Like, ah, that, that's fine, but I don't, 
don't I don't like seeing those people all the time on Facebook who are always like, hey, here's something you can give money to. Right. It's almost 2020. People don't listen to that too yeah. often. But listen, donate your time. Because if you donate your time, we get the more people we get watching our stream, it's gonna move us up the ratings. And then people who will come in and who can that- donate money or drop will come in and they'll see us. We'll be at the top of the Twitch page. People will be cheering. Babies will be smiling. Nobody really knows why. But and that and you know what? Word of mouth. Uh you know, if each of you listeners gets one other person to come watch of our watch our stream and you tell them to get one other person to try to watch our stream, that's just that's fantastic. Do that. Also known as WAM. I don't know what WAM. that means. W O M word of mouth. WAM. Oh, okay. WAM. Yeah. <laughs> it's now WAM. Let's w- WAM the shit out of our stream this weekend, people. Okay. <laughs> the spot. Wham We're it. going. WAM everything. When the stream comes along, you must WAM it. <laughs> if as you if as you <laughs> that, that sounds you like somebody stream? with a speech impediment trying to say you must vomit. <laughs> God damn listen, it. You listen, must want when, when, when you show up in the chat on the stream, I, I want to see nothing but WOM in chat. I want to see yep. WOMs. I want to see WOMs hear, in the chat. Yep. Hashtag SU, hashtag WOM. Yep. Okay. Just WOMs in the chat. Just drop so, a bunch of WOMs in that. Devin brings up a good point. Anybody who puts hashtag SU, hashtag WOM in the chat on our stream, we know you've listened to this episode. <laughs> So, there we go. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, with that being said, I just scratched my beard, and I'm sure you all heard that. You scratch it. Uh, let's do this week's. Uh, I forget what we call this now. See that I replace you for one week, Devin, and I already forget. It's not the moment of Zen mm-hmm. anymore. It's uh, life coaching with Devin. Life coaching with Devin. I'm going to read you a fortune cookie thing that I got because it had me fucked up yesterday. So I'm going to share this beautiful invite uh, invite advice with all of you. Ready? Now, Webby, I don't know what this fortune cookie is trying to tell me, but maybe you listeners can help me out. You can write in and tell me this. Ready? Here we go. <clears throat> Money is the root of all evil, and man needs roots. That's what the fuck my fortune cookie said to me. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, what? What is this? What? Are, what? What? What man, is this? Man needs to be evil. Yeah, that's what it's telling me. Like, what are you trying to tell me, Forge Cookie? Like, you need to tell me, like, yo, you need, you need more, you need to be more evil in your life. You'll you get know, rich. You know who would know the answer to this question, Devin? The immortal billionaire person who owns an island that we made up. You're right. He would. He would. I forgot, but I think he might have like a weird unibrow or something. He there does, was, in fact, have a weird unibrow. There was something with his face that was off, I remember. Might have been the he unibrow. He has a weird unibrow. Yeah. Yep. He does for sure. We still got to make him. We need to make him a character so I can put him as an NPC. In something. In, in, I don't know game. what. Just make him in Vamp. Just throw him in Vamp. Okay, but me and you, you need make... to make him as a character then. Yeah. I mean, he'll make sense in Vamp. I don't know what what he would be, though. Okay. Well, we'll figure I feel it like out. we do. I feel like we do too many mages. Like I want to do something different besides the mage. Yeah, we'll just cu- we'll custom make a thing. He, he'll just be a legit m- immortal. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, me and you will custom make something for him, and we'll talk like to him it. in the vamp game. Uh, he may be the, he may be a character that's actually stronger than Abraham. Well, he just walks around and goes, "Eh, I'm good." I mean, he's truly immortal. He can't be he can't be killed, and he has an army of dinosaurs. Every, every you know we okay. Every first off, <laughs> everything has a weakness and can die. <laughs> but you are right; he has an army of fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> so I mean, he's got that going for him. Uh, which brings he, me to another he, movie: he Iron Sky. Have you ever seen Iron Sky? I have seen Iron Sky, dude. I, apparently, Iron Sky Two. There's Hitler in the center of the Earth riding a T Rex. I need to see this. That sounds almost as ridiculous as Kung Fury. Oh, I loved Kung Fury. <laughs> Another God movie damn. I made you watch. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Devin, where can people find you? <laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter at DMP underscore Pookie and on Twitch at Pook Killed Me. And if you have Halo Reach on PC and you want to join me in Halo Reach on PC, you can send me an invite at Kronos3092. That's C H R O N O S 3092. Devin, I'm real sad. Why? 
What about no eBay? All, what about all your loyal followers on eBay? You're right. You guys can find me on eBay. As always, trying to sell Pokemon cards that I got out of a cereal box. At cereal Pokemon. Cereal, I'm there. Cereal Pokemon you sound like a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cereal Pokemon. <laughs> All right. As always, guys, you guys can follow me on Twitch. No, on Twitter at Jax Forest Walker, all one word. On Twitch at DM Webby. On Instagram at Patrick.Webster52. And on eBay at Amazon. That's it. <laughs> uh, following Serial Pokemon. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for downloading. Try to get us to Russia still. Still working on that. I'm working a couple angles myself. Um, come hang out at our stream. We love you guys. And as always, fuck Booster Gold. Fuck Booster Gold. <laughs> Dan Cook, we're no longer dissing you, but still, if you want to come on SU, we'll explain ourselves. If you don't want to come on SU because you don't think we're popular enough, well, go fuck yourself. <laughs> hey, Webby. <laughs>